Shalom. Today is the 31st of March, uh, nine, uh, 2000, 2015, and uh, it's a very important date because today the powers, uh, world powers, decided to uh, postpone uh, the talks with Iran until uh, July, and um, I think it's very important to share uh, a piece of information I picked up today from Rachel, from my wife Rachel, who works in Kol Israel, uh, monitoring the broadcasts not only of our neighbors who speak Arabic, but also the Iranians and others. And uh, Rachel picked up today some information which I think is exceedingly worrying about the Iranian nuclear project. Uh, as you all know, the U.S. government, the Europeans, are trying to convince uh, the Iranians to decelerate their program, not to terminate it, uh, not to take it apart, just to decelerate um, with, I think, 6,500 centrifuges, uh, and the Iranians are refusing to export their uh, uranium, their finished uranium, to Russia um, in order to prevent them from turning it into an atom bomb. And today, Rachel picked up something horrible. Rachel picked up information today that the Chinese revealed that the North Koreans are uh, producing, together with the Iranians, the North Koreans are producing the Iranian nuclear weapons. The North Koreans are storing the weapons for Iran. And when the time comes, we are not talking about breakout of six months or 12 months. We're talking about tomorrow, the day after the Iranians say to the North Koreans, ship us our bombs, we are ready. The North Koreans are going to ship the bombs pr produced by Iran with the North Koreans. And the war is imminent the moment the, the, the Iranians uh, ask for their nuclear weapons. I wanted to share some information, uh, which I don't remember how, how long ago it was. It must have been maybe 10 years ago, more or less. But uh, it was reported in the news that there was a major explosion, a major train explosion on the railroad tracks, uh, which demolished an entire town in North Korea, and that everyone on the train died. The whole town was killed, destroyed. 5,000 North Koreans were killed. And uh, there was like silence. Nobody understood what happened and who did it. But uh, later, uh, we have our sources. The Syrian newspapers were reporting uh, the deaths, uh, the, the, all the obituaries uh, in the Syrian newspapers were reporting the deaths of the top Syrian military leadership that was killed on that train in North Korea. So it is very clear, and I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about secrets, I'm talking about information that was readily available in the Israeli media. The North Koreans have been working methodically with Iran to produce nuclear weapons, uh, ballistic missiles, and uh, nobody ever spoke about the ballistic missiles in this conference, in these meetings in Lausanne, Switzerland. So the Iranians are continuing nonstop, full speed with their missiles. The nuclear weapons are there already in uh, North Korea. North Korea, which suffers financially, seems to be getting a lot of money from Iran to do this. Iran has money for nuclear weapons. Iran has money for missiles. Whereas the poverty level in Iran is at 40%. Iran has the highest suicide rate ever in its history. The situation economically is horrible for the people of Iran. But the mentally insane Ayatollah regime in Iran which is now the great ally of President Obama in fighting ISIS, which is another insane organization. These people in Iran are starving. Their, their, these leaders are starving their people in Iran, paying money to the uh, North Koreans. And the moment the sanctions are lifted, God forbid, on Iran, there will be so, there are like 60 oil tankers uh, floating around in the oceans, ready to supply oil immediately uh, to anyone who wants it, uh, the barrel of oil is going to go down to below $10 a barrel. They're going to destroy the oil industry in every country. Uh, the oil is there. The oil is ready. Iran is going to be flush with money. Uh, I don't know how much will go to the people. But meanwhile, the little money the Iranians do get, in spite of the sanctions, goes 
to North Korea. So this is from the Chinese news today, March 31st, 2015. I don't know if the President of the United States knows this. I don't know if uh, Secretary of State Kerry knows it or President, Vice President Biden, uh, the American uh, leadership, Congress, uh, Democrats, Republicans, I don't know who knows what. But we know one thing, that this cooperation between North Korea, a, the most horrible rogue state in the world, and Iran, and the Iranians are good people, but the Iranian regime is a rogue state with only one thing on their mind, and that's nuclear weapons, destruction of Israel, destruction of Saudi Arabia, destruction of other countries. And these meetings in Lausanne, Switzerland, the last few weeks, and to be continued in July, they're a farce. They're a joke, a horrible joke. I don't know what's going to happen with Iran. I don't know if uh, President Obama is trying to push Israel into a corner that it might have to act by itself. Um, I know that, uh, again, from broadcasts that Rachel picked up from the Arabic media, President Obama has three tasks. One task is to set up uh, a new government in Iran, regime change, overthrow the Ayatollah regime, and create a government which is more pro-Saudi, pro-Western, maybe under supervision of the UN. Uh, and secondly, to destroy the Jewish state of Israel. Obama has sworn uh, to Abu Ghraib to destroy the state of Israel. If you want to see the YouTube on this, go to Saudi Plant, P-L-A-N-T, uh, over four and a half million hits on this. Um, and the third command of the Saudis to Obama is to make America a Muslim country. So what I think is happening here is that President Obama is feigning, he's feigning support for Iran, feigning uh, uh, understanding and toleration for Iran, uh, so that uh, the whole world will stand back uh, and then Israel, which really understands what's happening, and so do the Saudis and other Arab countries, uh, will have to act uh, without uh, the United States of America um, and basically let Iran and Israel duke it out in a, to a, a mutually self-destructive war. Another thing I wanted to share today, March the 31st, is that there is a war going on now in Yemen. The Iranians have succeeded in training a, a, an ethnic group in Yemen that has been persecuted, that has suffered at the hands of the Sunnis. And it's a group called the Houthis. And the Houthis are Shiites. Uh, the Houthis, by the way, are not madmen. Uh, the Houthis are not extremists. They're actually rather liberal. But they've been so persecuted by the Sunnis, because that's the way it is in the Middle East, that the Houthis uh, now have basically taken control of uh, Northwest and North uh, Yemen, um, backed by Iran. Uh, and I don't want to go too far, but I have to say that the northern border of Yemen, if you look at the map of Yemen and Saudi Arabia and you go to the coast of the Red Sea, uh, the Houthis are about, when I say the Houthis, it means the Iranians also, because the Iranians are there. The Houthis and the Iranians are an eight hour drive from the holy city of Mecca. So if the Iranian plan is to remove the Saudi leadership from Mecca and Medina and basically destroy the, the Sunni leadership of the Saud family, they can do it now because they have a springboard on the border between Yemen and Saudi Arabia. The Iranians have been spending incredible amounts of money and, and, sh and shedding the blood of their people the Iranian people, who I always say this, the Iranian people are good people. And they are sacrificing the children of Iran in battles in Iraq, in battles in Syria, in battles in Lebanon, in battles in Yemen. And at the same time, Iran is spending its money on nuclear weapons. Only God knows what's going to come out of this. The Iranian threat is not only a threat to Israel. It is not only a threat to America. The Saudis understand this very well. And in my third book, Islamic Threat Updates, Almanac Number 1, I spoke about a, a missile base in Saudi Arabia built by the Chinese, manned by the Chinese. The Chinese have uh, supplied, this is as of 10 years ago, so I really don't know the updated amount of missiles. The Chinese have sold the Saudis 120 Dongfeng missiles. The Dongfeng missiles are the equivalent of Pershing's. In other words, capable of carrying a nuclear payload. Pakistan, which has its atomic weaponries, paid for by the Saudis, 
Uh, Abdul Qadir Khan, the father of the Pakistani nuclear project, uh, has provided the Saudis with the nuclear payloads for the Chinese missiles. So the Pakis have provided nuclear weapons. Oh, by the way, the Pani Pakistanis are also fight, helping in a multinational uh, uh, military unit to fight the Iranian and Shiites. Uh, the Pakistanis are there. This is a, a war between Sunni and Shiite Islam. So you have the El Salayl Oasis. It's in my third book. The American media has never spoken about this. Uh, this I received actually from Israel's biggest newspaper, Idiota Chronot, with their permission. I've been translating this and broadcasting this throughout the world uh, in an article written by Ronen Bergman, who is one of Israel's foremost intelligence uh, uh, re reporters. So Saudi Arabia, which may be a, a feudal or medieval type government, but they're not crazy uh, like Iran. The Saudis have 120 nuclear tip missiles. Iran is basically trying to tip the balance, which could lead to a nuclear war in the Middle East. Forget about Israel. This is about a war between Sunnis and Shiites of over 1,400 years. So it's very important for the West, I think, to come to a conclusion. And again, it, I don't want to say it has nothing to do with Israel. In 2009, there was a, an Iranian spring which was suppressed brutally by the Pazdaran, the Basiji. And so many innocent boys and girls were killed in the streets of Tehran and throughout Iran. And President Obama did nothing about it. The time has come for a regime change in Iran. Again, not because of Israel, but because of the Iranian people. The Iranian people are good people. Uh, they were allies of Israel, allies of America, until stupid President Jimmy Carter brought down the Shah of Iran. Um, the Iranians have no reason to go to war with Sunni countries. They have no reason to go to war with Israel. They have no reason to go to war with the United States. They have a regime which is totally insane. And this totally insane regime is working together with another totally uh, insane regime in North Korea. And I don't know how this is all going to turn out, but this could lead to world war if Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran try to face off against the U.S., the Western countries, and Israel. And I, I really don't know what to tell you. I'm just very concerned, very worried. And like I said before, Israel uh, is not at the center of the problem. The center of the problem is in Tehran. And the world leadership needs to understand that all these negotiations with Iran are futile if North Korea is producing and storing and preparing to send these missiles to Iran. God bless all of you, and God save the world from the, the fanatic Muslims.